welcome back everyone we're starting this video off right at the entrance here and as you can see we got quite the mound right in front of us let me turn on this flashlight here for us so we can get a better look at everything there we go helps a little bit but oh, they got a giant mound of dirt right here at the entrance and look at this beauty you can see just all the space we have in this basement now climbing down here on the other side let's go ahead and take a peek at everything as you can see from last week as I mentioned before they had their footers here that they're getting ready to do some work on they got the rebar in here as well as some vapor barrier that they put up against the back and then as you can see they do a little bit of overhang on some of these because once they remove this mound they're gonna flip this back so it doesn't have any holes or anything like that in it It overlaps with this section because as you can see on this one it's flush so the section that's going to be here where this mound of dirt is, is going to have an overlapping section that's going to wrap on top of that so it's nice and flush. But what really needs to be appreciated this week is just the amount of material that's been excavated. So as you can see here, they've excavated this whole entire area on this side. As you can remember from the beginning of this project, I couldn't even reach over in this corner because the clearance was so low. And that's what it is looking back that way, which is incredible. And then we have a better look over here as well at the existing basement, which has some plastic wrap over it to kind of block anything from going into their existing basement. This is going to get saw cut and then a doorway is going to be made in order to kind of bridge these two new, the new basement with the old basement. So that's going to get demoed here probably in a week or two once we get all this extra material worked out. And as you can see as well on this side, they're starting to begin their footer holes here in the section. So you can see the same strategy along every wall in here, the ABAB pattern that we got going on. And then there's another footer from last week that we were looking at that they just started. That one's now finished. So this is a really good visualization kind of showing the stage of a footer, which is nice. We don't really get this. So we, here we have the start. We're actually here. We have the start, right? Just a full on wall of dirt and material. And then slowly they pick away at it. So we have a nice rectangular shape pushed up against the foundation wall. And then it goes underneath, which we see here. So from here, they take it all the way back so it's flush with the wall and then flush with the ground. And then once that's been worked up, they'll carve into it going under the existing foundation and then going foot a couple inches down. So you have a nice base for your concrete and then making our way over here. Once that's been dug, in goes the rebar, vapor barrier, all that good stuff. And then they don't have that set up yet because there's really not any room, but then they'll put the forms and then they'll pour. As I mentioned before, this is looking really good. And the nice part about this job, as I mentioned at the beginning, is there wasn't really any cables or plumbing in this material. Everything was kind of up in the air and out of the way. And when it came to digging, we had pretty much free reign down here to kind of just excavate as we please because there was no existing plumbing or anything, as I mentioned. And when it came to the plumbing, it's pretty high up there. So you don't run into the risk of like bumping your equipment or bumping your head on it. And then the wires are nice and tidy up against the cross space as well so there's nothing hanging the only thing that is hanging is our lights and then our electrical cables to run our equipment but besides that a really easy job we got going on here i hope that was an insightful process for you guys taking a look at this basement here and kind of going over the footers and everything if you have any comments go ahead and leave them in the comment section down below we'd love to read them and we'd love to answer any questions you might have about the process anything like that the material why we do what we do that kind of thing but with that said, I'm going to go around, collect the cameras, go ahead and collect the footage, and then hang these up for next week so we can get a nice time-lapse video of the footers getting finalized. And then hopefully in a week or two, all this final material will be excavated, and then we will have final poured kind of footers, and then the saw cut can begin into the existing basement. So this job is flowing really nice, as I mentioned. This is probably one of the quickest jobs we've done just because of everything has just been in our favor so far. I'm gonna go ahead, grab these cameras, you're gonna watch me, and then we'll get into the time lapse and kind of go over everything with a voiceover. Yeah, so I'm gonna show you guys real quick. So I need to use some of these bags again to kind of make a little step for myself so I can reach that, but they got these working like sandbags right now to hold back all this dirt that they got here at the entryway, which is kind of funny, I just noticed that. But here at Gold's Concrete, we make, uh, we make it work. This is what we do. But let's go ahead and grab these cameras, like I said. Oh, I got sick the other day, so I'm feeling mighty weak today. And just like that, we got the camera. These are the best clamps I've ever used in my life. That's the first one down. Let's go ahead and rearrange you guys so we can grab this other one over here. 
How are we going to do this? That's staring at a bunch of dirt, ain't it? There we go. Nice and cozy up here. And just like that, another one down. This dirt is nice and soft. If I was building a sand castle or something, this is the kind of dirt I'd want to use. This stuff's amazing. All right, let's go ahead and get the footage off this bad boy and then we'll hop into the time lapse. Before we shoot off to the time lapse, I just want to butt in here real quick and then just give a huge shout out to Brino for the TLC 300 that they sent us. So as you know from the first video in this series, we've been kind of reviewing the new version of their camera, the TLC 300, this one right here, to their older TLC 2000 that we've been using on most of our jobs for the past year and a half now. And honestly, I am very impressed with the way that this one's been performing. This one is also an amazing camera, don't get me wrong. It's amazing. This is, we have three of these that we have on our jobs most of the time, and they just work phenomenal. They're just so reliable and easy to use. But this one, it's a whole different animal. The low light capabilities on this is great, and the resolution I found is a little bit better. Not in terms of like pixel density or anything like that, just like a better image overall. And then in terms of battery life, this thing has actually been pretty astounding. So this one takes two double A's, which I mean, isn't too serious. If you've seen our first video, I use rechargeable batteries. That way we're not spending money all the time on buying double A batteries. But this one, they sent it out with four double A's. So it does take four batteries, so double that. So I mean, it kind of has an advantage, but I mean, the amount of life that we've gotten on this thing so far over the past month, of me having it on this job is astounding. So 80, 85% over a month. So this thing, Theoretically, it could last you four months and you'd be good. So really impressive. And then I have this running at a one minute interval, Monday through Friday during the work week. So nine to five, just for some more background information. But so far, this camera has been phenomenal. I'm very impressed with the battery life on this thing. If you're looking for something to either record your jobs or to do a time lapse of, I highly recommend Brino. They've been nothing but great for us and they have really good customer service. We talk to them every now and again and it's just been phenomenal. So if you're looking for any kind of time lapse camera, Brino is the way to go. But with that said, I'm about to grab all the footage, put it on my computer, and then we're going to hop straight into the time lapse. So I'll see you guys there. Hopping into the time lapse this week, you'll see that there's going to be a lot of shoveling. So from where we left off last week, the guys are clearing this kind of main staging area and they're slowly going to push their way towards that back wall behind all these concrete bags. The soil is really soft, as I've said throughout this whole series so far. So it's really easy to break apart using just shovels. And then they have one uh, electric jackhammer down there that just makes it super easy to kind of tear through all this dirt. Switching angles, you get an even better view of this. And since they have more room for the staging area, they're able to create this nice soft pile of dirt right near the entryway. All this room allows them to do things in stages so right now they're just working on clearing all the material out of the basement and then from here once that pile gets really big as you can see here it's starting to stack up pretty high towards the camera. They're going to switch over towards the entrance and then just start to load this on the conveyor and then have one of them out there wheelbarrowing this out to the trailer. We've seen quite a few videos here on YouTube where people try to do this on their own homes where they use buckets and we do not recommend that way whatsoever. Definitely if you're gonna do this at home or if you're thinking about doing this, conveyors are probably the easiest and just the most intuitive thing to use in terms of just freeing up a lot of your work that you have to do. Because taking a look at this footage right here, you can see the access hole that we have here on the left. And then what we've seen on the internet is, is people load up just your Home Depot buckets and then kind of just grab them and then put them on the outside, lift them up, carry one bucket at a time out to wherever they're dumping the dirt. Honestly, even for us doing this all the time, that sounds painful and we don't want to go through that kind of excruciating pain. So a conveyor belt on these kind of jobs is so crucial, especially if it's a bigger job because then you can link them together. If you go back and watch some of our previous videos on some of the larger basements we've done, that's actually what we do. By linking all of our conveyors together, we're able to go one either deeper into the basement, so go from one corner to the other and then just have them work in that section without having to do this huge pile right near the entry hole or to have a conveyor go all the way down to the street and kind of reduce the need for a man with a wheelbarrow and it just goes straight to the trailer or in some cases if we have enough room outside the skid steer. 
However, as with anything, this is not the only way to do it. We've just found that the conveyor method and then just manual labor is the easiest and most effective for us. And this method is especially useful on these smaller footprint homes, kind of like the ones we're dealing with here, because a lot of the homeowners that do do these extensions do have smaller homes that are in more downtown areas because the only way that you can go is down or up on your existing home. So a lot of the existing footprints are pretty tiny. So getting anything besides, you know, a small crew in there or, you know, doing the bucket method is probably your most viable option because Footing, fitting a skid steer down here is the entire basement so that's not viable and then even the bucket method is just a lot of manual work that's not really necessary so it conveyors all the way turning our attention back to the footage though the guys are making quick progress with this i think this is their third pile of dirt that they built up here at the entrance and then you can see they kind of had a bigger crew come over here this day to help them out some more and we can start to finish where we kind of filmed today. You can see the overall shapes and everything and then where all the footers are going to go. So honestly, we're getting really close to wrapping this up, but this will bring us to the outro now. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed the time lapse. I have a final question for you guys in the comment section down below. We really want to start reviewing more things here on the channel, whether that's stuff to record jobs, kind of like the cameras that we've been using, you know, going over those, or even if it's equipment that you guys want to see or equipment that we use now that you want to see kind of reviews or just anything on. We're really trying to get into that, kind of just to keep people informed, especially, you know, we know that as a company, it can be hard buying the right stuff sometimes, especially if there's not very many videos on it. And especially for things that you've never done in your life, say a basement digger, out and you want some good advice on things that you should purchase or be able to rent and able to do the job we'd love to hear your thoughts and comments down below so if you have anything that you want us to review like I said try to get in touch with some of these companies to see if they want to maybe sponsor us and then we can test some of their equipment anything kind of like that so if you guys want to see that go ahead and comment that down below but with that said I hope you guys enjoyed the video we'll see you in the next one bye